everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this gorgeous wildflower fields poncho. This is a really simple project. It's just four granny squares. There's one in the front, one in the back, and then two to kind of cap the shoulders. We're gonna learn how to crochet these granny squares together, and you can really play around with colors like I've done. You can mix them up and change the order in which they're done. So we're gonna crochet the granny squares first. We're gonna learn how to use the join as you go technique to connect them all to make the general shape of our poncho. And then later, we're gonna do uh, a little bit of an extension on the neck to give it a little bit of a collar. And then you can really customize this um, by extending the bottom too. We're gonna to do sort of like a bottom edge and you can make this as long or short as you want. In fact, this whole thing is very customizable by changing the square uh, sizes. Um, you can make it larger or smaller. You can make it down to a child size, up to an adult size, and then any size you want really, and any length. You can really make this kind of come like down to the knees if you want to, or shorter for like warmer days. So we're gonna go through this every step of the way. And I also wanted to mention the free written pattern to this poncho can be found on the Fiberflux blog. The ad-free PDF you can get in my Etsy shop. And then you can also become a Patreon uh, patron and uh, join our Fiberflux Gold Club. And um, you can have access to this PDF pattern and a, a bunch of other ones too as well. So I'll put all the links down below for those so you can um, access those patterns that way too. So let's talk a little bit about dimensions and then we're just going to jump right into making this. Now, across here, uh, like I said, you can really change the sizing, but I'm going to share the dimensions that I got uh, with the yarn and the number of rounds and such. Um, across here, across from our widest point here, all the way across to this point is 35 inches wide. From the V part of the neck straight down to the bottom point is 26 inches. From the bottom point all the way up to this edge where your shoulder, like where your arm would come out, is 26 inches across here. And then for the neck, from point to point here is six inches. And then from point down to this V is also six inches long. Now the shoulder from the opening of the neck down to where the sleeve is, is 19 inches. Um, on the Fiberflux blog, again, the link is below, um, I did make a little diagram of the dimensions so you can see that there as well. So again, that link is below. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure will be super helpful to measure as you go along and when we're making our squares to get um, different sizes. And we're gonna be using a six millimeter J crochet hook for this. This is my Furls Odyssey in the mint. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. And as an option, I like when I'm piecing things together and seaming, um, I like to have some removable stitch markers on hand. Uh, we will be uh, connecting our squares using the join as you go technique, but there are certain areas of um, our piece that we will be seaming. So I like to use these to kind of clip everything together so that it holds it and it's not as cumbersome and it kind of will hold it for me as I work. So these are really helpful. Um, make sure they're removable. If you don't have removable stitch markers, you could use something as simple as a clothespin, um, safety pins, uh, or even little scraps of yarn and just slightly, like loosely tie them together. So these are helpful when we're kind of piecing everything together. Now let's talk about this beautiful yarn that I have here. This is uh, called Portobello by Hobie. And this is a really soft heathered yarn. I thought it would be a lovely palette for us to use. The soft heathered um, colors are very wearable and feel very nice. So it's uh, gonna make a really nice project with this yarn. Now we're gonna be using, this is two, four, six, eight, ten 10 balls of this yarn. So um, we have quite a bit of yarn, but we're making a large project. So we'll need lots of yarn for this. And this is worsted weight yarn, and it recommends a, um, 
if we look at the label here, a five millimeter H crochet hook. But if you notice, we're using a six millimeter J crochet hook. I'm gonna go up a couple of sizes just because I want it to have some drape to it, okay? So we're gonna go up a little bit on our hook size. But if you need to substitute yarn, look for a yarn that um, is a four medium on the yarn weight scale. If you look at your yarn label and look for the little ball of yarn with a number in it, we need the four medium worsted weight and each ball of this is 131 yards. And I have 10 balls of this, so we're gonna need 1,310 yards of this. Now, if you're working from your scraps and using things that you have, um, you might have a little bit of wiggle room if you wanna make yours um, a vest or shorter sleeves or a little bit shorter, or you might need more yarn if you wanna extend it and make a, a longer um, length. Um, or if you want to um, make yours larger by making your squares larger, etc. But I'm going to be using 1,310 yards. Each ball of this is 131 yards, so 10 gives us that total. So now that we know the total yardage that we need, uh, let's talk about the colors a little bit. Um, I know I get a lot of questions about people wanting to replicate the palette that they see, the palette of the colors. Um, obviously, you can use any colors you like. You can make it all one color. You could do multicolors like I'm doing. Now, I am going to use these pastel colors here for the squares themselves. When we go to join them together using the join as you go technique, I'll work the last round with this gray around the bottom of our sweater with this. I thought that this neutral would kind of tie everything together. So we'll reserve these pastels for our squares. So that being said, um, I'm just kind of planning the colors if you wanted to kind of plan them the same way. So the colors that we have here, I have four balls of, this is called titanium, it's color 120. This light pink here is number 53, it's called Antique Rose. This slightly darker pink I have here is number 56 called Wild Berry. And again, these are all heathered, so they have little color nuances in them as well. This green that I have here is number 98, it's called Eucalyptus. The blue is number 79, it's called Open Sea. The lighter purple that I have is number 68 and it's called light purple. And the darker purple that I have here is number 70 and that is called purple rain. So um, again, like the hook, I'll put the link to the yarn below too so you can um, check it out if you want to. There's tons of other colors that this comes in. I just wanted kind of a really soft wearable palette for this. You can change up the colors however you want. It's completely up to you. Um, it's a very versatile piece as far as um, the yarn that you use in the colors. Worsted weight is a pretty common weight. It's easy to find. So if you want to use some yarn that you already have on hand, you can do that as well. So let's get started. Okay, so the first part of our tutorial, we need to make some granny squares. We're going to make four granny squares because how we're going to arrange them later. And we'll get into this in a little bit more in depth later. But this is going to be the front right here. And this will be where your neck is and then it'll come down the front of you. And then we're gonna uh, later be attaching these using our gray yarn and the join as you go method. So if you fold these in half, actually let me slide this down so you can see better. If you fold these in half, this will be where the neck opening is and your shoulders. So you can kind of get a, get a feel for how it's gonna look. Now if you notice, I did some um, design choices with the color. So I started this center square in the green and I worked my way outward. If we look at like a kind of like a rainbow spectrum here, I did green, blue, the darker purple, lighter purple, uh, light pink, and then the darker pink. Okay, I kind of went in that order starting from the center and working out. The other two, so we're going to have two of each. Um, so we're going to make this one together. But the other one, I did this in reverse order. So I started with the dark pink this time and I worked my way outward in this direction, okay? So just to, if you're kind of like wanting to replicate what I did, just to give you an idea, that's how I did it. So I did two working in this direction with my colors and we're gonna do two working in this direction with our colors, okay? So we can keep these around for reference. But if we flip this over, let me just flip this like this 
and this like this. This will be the back of it. Okay, so this will be gone. That'll be in the front. So we'll need to put another one back here, as you can see. Okay, so we're going to make one more of this. Now you can make all your granny squares look the same. You can make them all one color. It's completely up to you. But these two are going to be done. And then we're going to make one more like this. Okay, so that means we're going to start with the green. So let's make our uh, granny square together. We're going to get the first couple of rounds going and then we're going to kind of depart and work on our squares on our own. Um, and then when we come back, we'll finish up our granny square and then we're going to start doing the join as you go to connect them all together. Okay, so let's move these aside and grab our first color, whatever color it is. Um, that you want to work with is um, totally fine, but I am going to keep my yarn up here kind of in order so I can grab it as I need it. Okay, now as you can see, I've put quite a dent in these balls of yarn because I've already made three squares. Okay, so we're going to grab our first color, and what I'm going to do is zoom way, way in so you can see. Oh, one more thing. Let me zoom back out. Sorry about that. Um, now, I am going to do two rounds of each color. So I did two rounds of green, two of blue, two of purple, two of lavender, two of light pink, two of dark pink, okay? Again, you can do however you want with your colors. So before we put the last gray round of join as you go one here, our squares are about 13 and a half inches, okay? Just to give you a sense. Now you can, if you need to adjust the size of yours, you can make your squares larger or smaller. What I would recommend is to kind of uh, use your stitch markers or yarn scraps and kind of like clip them in place and um, you know, hold it up or try it on that way, okay? Just to see what size that you would like to have, okay? So anyway, these are about 13 and a half inches across, just so you know. All right, so let's go back to our green yarn and we're gonna zoom way in and we're gonna begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. So what we wanna do, let me just focus in. All right, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop and tighten. Again, we're gonna do our first two rounds in green. Um, and also that'll be good because um, I'm gonna show you how to stick with a uh, color for a, a second round and then how to switch colors. I'll show you how to do both of those things. So depending on how you wanna work your square, you'll know how to do both uh, ways, okay, of transitioning from round to round. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is chain four. To make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna join in the chain farthest from our hook with a slip stitch to create a loop that we'll be working our stitches into. So insert your hook into that chain farthest from the hook, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And then what I like to do is kind of open that ring up. If you prefer, I do get this question frequently, if you prefer to start your granny square with the magic ring, you can totally do that too. It's, it's um, up to you. Next, what we're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three. That's gonna count as one of our double crochets for our granny square. Then we're gonna work two double crochets into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into the center of the ring, and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. I'm also holding this tail along the edge of my ring as I work to weave it in as we go along as well. I didn't mention that before, but uh, do that, it'll save you a step. Then we're gonna work a second double crochet into the center of the ring. So this will give us a cluster of three double crochets because remember that chain three counted as one of our double crochets, okay? Now push things over if needed and chain one, then work three double crochets into the center of the ring. So one, two, and three, then we're gonna chain one, push things over if you want to, holding that tail along the edge, and work three more double crochets into the center of the ring. One, two, and three. Chain one, push things over if needed, and then work three more double crochets into the center of that ring. One, 
two and three, chain one, and then we're ready to join. So see how we have one, two, three, four groupings here? Now that chain three at the beginning of the row, count three chains up, one, two, three, that's our topmost chain. Join with a slip stitch to close into that topmost chain. Insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And round one is complete, okay? Now, we're gonna stick with the green for round two. So, uh, what we need to do though, because we're not switching colors, I'm gonna show you also how to switch colors later if you wanna do that instead. But, because we're not switching colors, um, we need to slip stitch over to the right place because we're gonna begin our round in this chain one space, but I see our hook is back here. So we're gonna slip stitch over into each stitch. So going in that first stitch, insert the hook into that stitch, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Insert your hook into the next stitch, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And in the chain one space, work a slip stitch as well. Okay, now our hook is in the right spot. So we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and work two double crochet into the center, or the chain one space, excuse me. Now remember that chain three counts as a double crochet, so this will give us that three stitch cluster that we're after, okay? Now, chain one, and in the same chain one space, we're gonna be creating our uh, square corner, okay? So in that same space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. All right, now we're gonna chain one and we're gonna hop over to the next chain one space. So skip over those three double crochets you see here and go into that next chain one space. And we're gonna do the same thing. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and in the same space, three more double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one. Hop over to that next chain one space, skip over that grouping here, and we're gonna do the same thing. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, you need to push things over, that's fine. And then three more double crochet. One, two, and three. Just like that, okay? Chain one, let's get a little bit more yarn here. And then hop over to that last chain one space here in our square and we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, we wanna chain one first, and then we wanna hop over to that, that space. So three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and three double crochet. One, two, and three and chain one, and then count three chains up and join with a slip stitch in that topmost chain to close the round, okay? All right, so it's starting to look like a little square. Now, according to this square that we're trying to mimic, our next round is gonna be in blue. So what we wanna do is cut the yarn, and fasten off, so grab that yarn, wrap it around the hook, and pull it through, okay? And also, that tail we wove in as we went along, you can pull that snug to kind of close up the center a little bit too if you want. All right, we're gonna move some of this yarn out of the way, and we're gonna grab the next color here. Okay, here is our blue. What we're gonna do is grab our square, and in any of these corner spaces, so we just created four corners of our square. You can see them here. You can kind of sharpen them up if you need to um, see it a little bit better. But we're gonna go into any of these corner spaces. Remember that chain one we did to create the corner? Go into any of those corner spaces with your hook. 
we're going to hook the new yarn through. It can be any of the four corners. Bring it through, and then we're just going to tie it right on. Okay? Now this is round three. Round three is really how you're going to work the rest of your square. You'll just be adding sides, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, so grab your new yarn, and we will hold this along the edge, too, on these first couple of stitches to weave it in as we go along. Okay, so go back in with your hook, that same chain one space, bring up a loop, and we're going to chain three to get the round started. So one, two, three, and then that same chain one space, holding that tail along the edges uh, we work, work two double crochet. One and two, and we're going to be creating a corner, because remember we're at a corner, so every time there's a corner we'll work the corners the same way. So chain one, and then in that same chain one space, work three more double crochet. One, two, and three. We have a tail in the way. There we go. And that was three, okay? Now, we just worked a corner. Let's, let's learn how to do a side. So chain one. And now along the side of our square here, we only have one little space, a chain one space. So we're going to work three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one. Okay, now we're back at a corner. So we're going to work that the same way. Three double crochet, one, two, three, and to make that corner, chain one, and work three more double crochet into that chain one space, that corner space, one, two, and three, chain one. Hop over to the next side space here, and we'll do that the same way we did the other side space, three double crochet, one, two, and three. Then we're going to chain one and we're at a corner space. And there's also a tail. So anytime you see a tail, just hold it along the edge and kind of stitch it in as you go. Okay, so we're at a corner. So we're going to do three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one, still holding that tail along the edge, and three double crochet on that same corner space. One, two, and three. Okay, we're about halfway around as you can see. So we're gonna chain one and we're gonna work our side how we did before. Okay, we can drop that tail. So we're going to work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, and then work the corner in that chain one corner space. We're going to work three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one, and in the same corner space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one. Okay, we're at our last side. So in that chain one space on the side, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, and then we're going to join in that third chain up, that topmost chain, with a slip stitch to close the round, okay? So for the rest of your square, until your square is as large as you would like it to be, or 13 and a half inches, whatever you're after, um, 
you're just going to keep repeating round three over and over and over again. The only thing that will change is as it grows larger, we, we just did a round where we did corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, all the way around. But um, as it grows, as you can see now, we're going to be doing corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, and so forth, okay? So the corners will always be worked the same, but the sides will grow. So if we look at our, let me just zoom out so you can see better. If we look at our larger square, our finished square over here, you can see it will go, and then the following round will be corner, side, 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 corner. And then the next row is corner, side, 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 corner, and so forth. So your corners, you can see a, almost like an invisible line that goes through here. Your corners will always be worked the same, but your sides will increase as you go along, okay? Now, um, we're gonna stick with the blue because remember we're doing two rounds per color, only if you're trying to replicate what I'm doing. So for this one, um, again, you would have to slip stitch over. So work a slip stitch in that first stitch, a slip stitch in the next stitch, a slip stitch in the chain one space, and you're ready to roll again, okay? So we're just gonna keep repeating row three over and over and over again until our square is as large as we would as we want it to be. Mine is 13 and a half inches, like I mentioned before. You can really change the sizing if you need to change um, the overall sizing of the piece, okay? So keep going with round three, and when we come back, we'll rejoin, and this square will be about as big as this square, and I'll show you how to finish up your square, and then we're gonna grab our join as you go color I'll be using gray and we're going to join all of our squares together and start building our piece okay so keep repeating round three until your square is as large as you would like it to be and we'll rejoin in just a minute all right just coming up to our last stitch of our square and then we're going to join chain one and then join with a slip stitch to close the round and then our beautiful square is finished all right, so we're just gonna fasten off this last square here. Just cut the yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it through the loop. And now we are ready to start assembling. So it's getting really exciting. So just to recap, we have four squares. They're each about 13 and a half inches wide. Now I did uh, two of where I started with pink and ended on green. So I did two in that way. And then I also did two where I started in the green and I ended on the pink, okay? So we're when we join these together, we're gonna alternate the colors, okay? So I'm gonna grab a ball of our gray yarn. This is gonna be the join as you go color. It's a nice neutral color and we're gonna use it to join our squares and also add a little bit of an extension to the bottom and also a little bit uh, to the neck part, okay? Just to kind of tie it all together. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. We're going to, now you can do your colors however you want, but what I'm gonna do is put this one in the middle and then I'm gonna take two of the green like this. Now let me just slide this down so you can see it. I'm gonna take two of my green. So this will be where they come together. And this is where your, your head will be, okay? And so we'll actually fold these in half because this is where it will sit on your shoulders, okay? So we're actually gonna fold these in half like this and then we'll flip it over and uh, do basically the same thing on the back. So it'll look like this in the front and the back, okay? So we're gonna use our yarn and the first square we're gonna do, we're gonna put a round of gray on here without joining anything. And then when we go to do our second square, uh, we'll join it, okay? So the first round we'll do, um, we'll just do gray and I'm gonna show you. Okay, so we can kind of scoot these other ones out of the way for a minute. And we're gonna grab our gray and our hook and like I said, we're just gonna put a simple round on this and nothing else, okay? So go ahead and in that corner space up here, go ahead and tie your new yarn on, just hook it on. Same thing we've been doing when we change colors on all these other rounds. 
We're just going to tie that new color right on here. And then just work on one more round of the gray, okay? So we can get our tail out of the way, bring up a loop, chain three, same thing we've been doing, okay? So nothing will be different for this round except you're just doing one more round in the join as you go color that we'll be using, okay? So let's work this round, same round we've been working. And when we rejoin, we're gonna finish up this round and start to join the next square on, okay? So just continue around like you've been doing, but just in your join as you go color. Okay, just working those last couple of stitches at the end of our round here. And then we're gonna join the same thing we've been doing with a slip stitch. And then what we can do is just cut this yarn. So pretty much like we've been doing. Now you're gonna grab your second square, whatever one you want to use to join. Now remember, I am gonna kind of alternate my colors. So I'm gonna grab this green one here like that and we're gonna join it onto the side like this. So we can sort of put this nearby, grab your join as you go color once again. And we're going to begin this round in a similar way by just hooking that new yarn on, tying it into any corner space. Just tie it right on there. And then we're gonna start the round the same way. We're gonna work down this side the same way we've been working. When we get to this first corner, that's when we'll begin to join, okay? So just begin it the same way, bring up a loop, chain three, work your corner the way you've been working it, two double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, and so forth, okay? So just begin this one, and we're gonna work down to the end here. When we rejoin, we'll be down here, and I'll show you how to connect it to this one. All right, coming down to the end here, just working the last few stitches of our round. So now we're at our corner, okay? So we're gonna grab our square here, because we wanna join this corner to this corner, okay? So we want to start our corner the same way. So begin by working three double crochet, one, two, and three. Now normally we would do a chain one, but we're gonna join instead. So we're gonna do a slip stitch join into this corner space, okay? So in order to do that, let me come in real close so you can see here. We're gonna take our hook and we're gonna go in from the top with our hook and we're gonna reach back here, scoop up that yarn with your hook and bring up a loop. You'll now have two loops on your hook, so bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And that is just a real easy way to join, slip stitch join, okay? Now let's kinda of turn this a little bit because we're gonna come down this other side now and work the rest of our corner. So we're gonna work three double crochet in that same corner space. So one, two, and three. And now, normally we would do a chain one, but we're ready to join again. So go into that next space of this other square from the top, reach back, scoop up that yarn, and bring that loop through the loop already in your hook. Now go back down to your original square and work three double crochet. One, whoops, two, and three. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna go back here. We're ready to join again. Go into that next space you come to in the other square, reach back, scoop up that yarn, and bring the loop through the other loop, okay? Come back down to the original square, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Go back to your other square, join it. Come back down to this square, three double crochet. One, two, and three. Go back up here and join. Come back down to your other square, 
three double crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, we are moving right along. Come back up here, join it. Come back down here, three double crochet. One, two, and three. Now if you notice this little, just as a side note, this little knot here, this is in the, when the yarn was being manufactured where when it was being wound onto a ball, it ran out and they had to join a new one. So sometimes you get that in your yarn. You can just kind of slide those stitches out of the way and later on uh, we might want to trim that. Okay, back to this. We're ready to join again. Come back up here, join. Come back down here, three double crochet. One, two, and three. Now I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so you can see our progress here. Let's get a little bit more yarn. We're about halfway, a little more than halfway through. Okay, come back up here, make your join. Come back down here, work your three double crochet. Now, I wanted to point out as a side note, some people have mentioned this before when we do join as you go proje projects. Um, sometimes I get this question, some people like to do their joins instead of going up from the top like I do. They like to come up from the bottom and join that way. If you want to do it that way, definitely feel free. It's totally up to you. Um, there's no real wrong way in going from the top or from the bottom. It's definitely a personal preference. So if you like to come up from the bottom in your join instead of going through the top like I do, definitely feel free, okay? All right, we're just moving right along here, doing the same thing all the way across, okay? All right, come back up here, make your join, whoops, make your join, and come back down here, do your three double crochet. One, two, and three. Getting towards the end here, come back up here, make your join, Come back down, three double crochet. One, two, and three. All right, here's the last space before the corner. So make that join. And now we can turn our work a little bit. Let me just get situated here. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Work, go into that corner space and work your first three double crochets. One, two, and three. And then come back to your corner space on this side, work your slip stitch join, and then finish up that corner. Work three double crochet. One, two, whoops, let's back up. Anytime you have a stitch that you do and you don't love it, then definitely you can go back and redo it. That would look a little bit loose and loopy to me, so I'm gonna redo that one. So let's do two and three. Much better. Okay, so we are joined, okay? We have our lovely joins going on here. You can kind of straighten things out. And I will say, if you're noticing there's a little dip here, um, it's because we're slip stitch joining. That's totally normal because instead of a chain one, we're doing something that's a little shorter, okay? So you will have a dip. Now, that being said, we are going to keep going with the gray later in some of these areas, so those dips will be a little less apparent, okay? Now, the rest of your square here, what you're gonna do is just keep going with your regular round that we've been doing, okay? So in the next space, work three double crochet. One, two, three and chain one, because we're working as normal now for the rest of our square. All right, and then just continue that all the way around, just like that, okay? Okay, so when we rejoin, what we're gonna do is we're going, I'm gonna show you kind of the end of this round. We're gonna continue around and finish that round. And then we're gonna come over here, because remember when we laid out our squares, let me just show you. When we laid out our squares, 
we had this one as the center, like where your, your neck will be here, okay? So we're gonna add this one next. And this one is very similar to what we just did, but I wanna also show you because this part will be very similar, joining all the way up to here. But when we get here, we kind of have an intersection of three squares now, and that join will be slightly different. So I do wanna show you that join, and then you'll be ready to finish the rest of it, okay? So let's get to the end of this round here, and then we'll join this one next, okay? Just working that last stitch of this round as we finish up the join of our second square. I'm just gonna join to close with a slip stitch. Same thing we've been doing. So now we can cut this yarn and go ahead and fasten that off, okay? So now we have two fully joined squares, okay? Now remember, this is the front and this will be at some point folded over because that will go over the shoulder. Now, we're gonna do the third one. Um, we're not gonna do the whole thing together, but I'm gonna get it started and we're gonna, I'm gonna come around, join it the same way we've been doing. We've already seen that part. But when we get towards this join, I do wanna show you this join because we're gonna be joining, so far we've been joining one square onto one square. But, um, I also want to show you when you join one square onto two squares, this join is just slightly different, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start on this second one and come around, and when we rejoin, I'm going to be at this point here, and I'm going to show you how to connect those, okay? Okay, so once you get to the spot where you need to join one square onto two squares, you're going to do your corner beginning the way you've been doing it. So do your first three double crochets, one, two, and three. And then, instead of joining into the corner spaces, so if we look at that, that would put us, if we join in that corner space or that corner space, it would put us off center. So we wanna be centered. Uh, so what we're gonna do is go in the space in between the squares, okay? So this opening here. Okay, so that's all, no big deal. So go right in the center space, just so things won't be off centered, and join with your slip stitch, join, and then you can rotate things if needed. And then just finish off the corner like you've been doing, okay? And then you can just do your squares the same way. So that's the only other special instance that I wanted to show you. So once these are joined, you're gonna have this front part done, the V part. So then for the back, once you, now that we know how to join the squares together, I just wanna kinda of show you the configuration. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fold the side squares in half. So fold this side, fold this side, and we're gonna flip it over. Let me just kinda of grab it up all together. <laughs> we're gonna flip that over. So the back will have your two folded squares and the inside of the other one and you're just gonna do the same thing. You're gonna lay the square down the exact same way and you're gonna join the back. You're just gonna mirror exactly what you did on the front, okay? So let's go ahead and finish our join as you go. We've learned how to do all the different little joins that we need and we're just making this shape, same shape. Let me just scoot my scissors over. Same shape front and back. So this will be the neck opening and you'll kind of pull it over, and then this is where your shoulders will be, and then this will be the back, and then the front looks the same, okay? So let's go ahead and join. The next thing we're gonna do is kind of finish up our join as you go, and then we're gonna learn how to add a little bit to the neck here, just to give it a little bit more of a finished look, and then we're going to extend the bottom. So we're gonna learn how to kind of bring some more gray down here and lengthen it a little bit, and that part is really customizable. You can make it just as you see here, or you can make it really long, okay? So let's finish joining our squares to get this general shape, and then when we come back, we'll do a couple other little finish work type things. Just working that last stitch. And I'm gonna close the round with a slip stitch. Same thing we've been doing. So now all of our squares are joined. Now, I'm gonna do a couple of rounds around the bottom just to give it uh, a little bit more length. So I'm not gonna fasten off yet, but I'm gonna move my hook for just a minute because I wanna show you, let me flip this back around. 
how cool this looks. So we have our um, the top where our neck goes. Everything's all joined. And it looks the same on the front and the back. This is the shoulders, where your head goes. And we were just here a minute ago, okay? So we are going to this bottom edge, this whole bottom edge here, we're gonna extend it with some of the gray. We have some gray yarn left, a couple of balls of yarn. So we're gonna extend the bottom, okay? So we'll do that first. So after we're done our gray bottom here to extend it a little bit, um, the top here, the neck, um, I'm gonna add a little bit of more gray up here just to make it look a little bit more finished. Um, it just looks like the squares are joined and I, I just wanna give it a little bit more of a finished look. So we're gonna worry about that later. But for now, if you flip your poncho over so that it's upside down, we are going to start uh, adding a little bit of length on here, okay? So I'm gonna grab my hook again. And remember, we didn't fast off, we just fasten off, we just left a loop. So to do the bottom, it's pretty easy because it's just granny squares. So we're just gonna be working in these spaces like we've been doing and working our corners the exact same way. Now when we get to where our squares are joined here, I'm gonna show you how to work those. So let's begin, I'm gonna zoom way, way in so you can see here. Um, we're gonna begin where we left off, um, but we need, once again, to get our hook in the right spot because we're sticking with the same color. We're not gonna cut and tie it into a corner space. We're sticking with the same color. So we need to slip stitch over to that first corner space. So go ahead and slip stitch over until you get to the corner space, just like that. And then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. This is gonna seem very similar to how we worked our granny squares, and that's what we want. We want it to mimic that same look. So it just kind of flows and extends, okay? So we did a chain three. Then we're gonna work two double crochets into that same space, and then a chain one, and then three double crochets into that same space. One, two, and three. And again, this is gonna seem very familiar basically how we've been doing the granny squares, okay? So we can turn our piece a little bit, and then we're just gonna work across. So you'll wanna chain one, and then work three double crochet into that first space that you come to. So one, two, and three, chain one, next space, three double crochet, one, two, and three and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna continue across just for a little ways. And then when we get to this first join where our two squares came together, um, I'm gonna take you right up to that point and then I'm gonna show you how to work this area. And then you'll really know how to work the whole rest of the bottom. All right, we've worked across a little ways, just working one more stitch. And now we're at, like I was mentioning, where the two squares come together. So you don't wanna work into the corner space or the corner space, because it would be, all, again, off center, similar to other areas we've worked. You wanna go into the space in between the two squares, okay? So there'll be a corner space, a corner space, and then that space right under that join. You wanna go into that space. So work your chain one, and then just go right into that space with your three double crochet. So one, two, and three, chain one. And then you can just continue right on around, okay? So what you're gonna do is just keep going around, handling the areas in between your squares um, the same way we just did, all the way around. And then you go all the way around the back here, and then you'll come to a corner, you'll do the corners the same way we've been doing for our granny squares, and go all the way around. So I'm gonna go all the way around working it the way I showed you. And then when we get towards the end of this round, um, we'll rejoin and I'll show you how to work the next round. The next round is easier because it's just gonna be granny spaces. We're not gonna have any um, joins or anything that we have to work into. So the next round uh, is considerably easier. So keep going. Um, and when we get towards the end of this round, we'll rejoin and work on the next round. All right, just coming up to the end of the round and we're just gonna join it the way we've been doing this all along. And then depending on how far you want to extend your poncho, it could go down to your knees, it could just be a couple rounds, it's completely up to you. Um, you'll just keep repeating this round um, that we're about to do. So this last round is the one you'll repeat 
depending on how much you want your poncho to be extended, okay? I'm gonna go for a couple rounds on mine, but you're just gonna slip stitch over that corner space once again, chain three, and work your uh, granny stitches all the way around. Now I uh, have run out of yarn, so I'm gonna grab another ball, and I'm just gonna tie this right on and keep going. We can weave these ends in later. Just like that, okay? So we're just gonna keep working our uh, granny stitches the way we've been doing it. And let me get these ends out of the way. There we go. And we're just gonna keep going around with our stitches, okay? So just do your three double crochet. Same thing we've been doing, chain one, three double crochet, one, two, and three, okay? Now what I wanted to show you, uh, you'll just keep going across. Now we're just gonna have uh, spaces to work into because see we, we had our join and we did our, our grouping here, but you're just gonna work straight across, okay? So just go around like we did before, just straight across, and then when you get to that corner, work the corners the same way, okay? So keep going with this round, and when we come back, I'm gonna have uh, quite a bit of extension on here, and I'll show you um, how far we've come and how many rounds we did. Again, that part is completely customizable, and if we flip this over, You can see I just have a little bit of an edge now, okay? But I'm gonna go uh, several rounds. And if you're having a little bit of dip here because we did go into that area, uh, by the next round or two, it will have a nice straight edge. So if you have a little bit of dip, don't worry. Just keep working another round or two and it'll kind of work itself out, okay? So we're gonna keep going with our rounds and rejoin in just a minute. Just coming up to that last stitch of our last round here, and I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to close. Same thing we've been doing. And then once you're done and you get the length that you want, now I've gone a few rows here and I'll show you, or rounds rather, and I'll show you in just a sec how many. But you wanna cut the yarn and we're gonna fasten off. And let's turn this around so we can see how beautiful our poncho looks. Now I had a little bit of more yarn, but I really liked the length I was getting. So you can really take this as far down as you want to, but I'm just gonna get everything kinda situated here. You can see how beautiful it looks. So just um, to show you, I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds. Okay, when you're ready to work on the neck part, now you can leave this as is if you like the way it looks. I wanted to give mine a little bit more of an edge here. So I'm gonna grab some of the gray yarn. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work around uh, in a round, but I wanna tie the new yarn kind of back here so it's behind us a little bit. Okay, so this is the neck opening. We're gonna make this the front. So just in any of these chain one spaces, Go ahead and tie the new yarn on. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see. Hook the new yarn on, bring it through, and we're just gonna tie this right on, okay? Nothing fancy. Okay, so bring up a loop and chain three. One, two, three, and now in that same space, we're going to work two double crochet, okay? So two double crochet, one, and two. Whoops, let's redo that last one again. I hit a little snag there. Okay, and two. Then we're gonna chain one, hop over to the next space, and we're just gonna do this across till we get to that center of that V, and then we're gonna do something a little bit different there. So just work three double crochet, chain one, until you get to your V. Okay, we're approaching the V now in our poncho. So what we're gonna do is, let me just work the last stitch of the cluster before that, chain one. Now, we're going to uh, work into this first corner space. See how there's a, a granny square, and a granny square, and a granny square. This first corner space here that you see, right here on the side, we're gonna work into that. So go ahead and, in that corner space, 
of that first granny square that you see, work three double crochet, one, two, and three. And now we're going to work a slip stitch into the center space of this next corner, okay? So you have a corner here that we worked into, then this second granny square, we have a corner space. We're gonna work a slip stitch into that corner space. And then in the next corner space, this third granny square here, that corner space, you're gonna work three double crochet into that. So one, two, and three. Just like that, and then of course chain one. Okay, so then we're gonna turn it a little bit and then we're gonna continue around. So just keep working three double crochet, chain one all the way around until you get to the V on the back, okay? And then we'll rejoin when we get to that V. It's done the same way, but I'll show you again in case you would like to see it again, okay? So just keep working your three double crochet chain one all the way around until you get to that next V on the back side of the poncho. Okay, continuing around to the back now, we're gonna do the same thing, okay? So once again, work in this, this first granny square that we come to, work three double crochet, chain one in that first corner space. So one, two, and three, now we're gonna go into the next granny square that we see in that corner space and work a slip stitch. And then in that third granny square over here, we're gonna go in that corner space and work three double crochet, chain one, okay? So one, two, and three, chain one, okay? Now you can just kind of finish the round the same way you've been going all the way around until you get to where you started, okay? So for us, it's just a few more stitches here. So let's just go right ahead and get to that spot, and then we'll uh, start on the next round of our neck. Just getting a little bit more of an edge on there, make it look a little bit more finished. Wanted to kind of also mimic the bottom gray that I had too, and the gray that's running in between the squares too. So it kind of really ties it all together. So I'm just giving a little bit more of a substantial um, kind of visual edge on there, a little bit heavier looking gray edge. Okay, so here we are at the beginning. Now we're gonna count three chains up and join with a slip stitch. Whoops, to close the round, okay? Now let's put another round on there. We're just kind of building it up a little bit. It's starting to look really nice, but we're gonna put another round on here. So where we began here, uh, again, we need to slip stitch over to that next uh, chain one space so that we can begin. So go right in that chain one space and chain three. One, two, three. Work your two double crochets. Again, the chain three counts as one of our double crochets every time on this pattern, so. We're gonna do two for that first one, okay? And now we're just gonna go around and to this first V again, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to handle that. Okay, we are approaching the V part of our poncho once again. So once you get to, this is our V here, right? And we have a space before and a space after. We're gonna work into those spaces. And that'll kind of bring it together a little bit more so we're gonna work a slip stitch into that next space right before you get to the very center and then hop over to that, that center part and go into that next space and work a slip stitch into that. And that's sort of like, when you look at it, sort of like brings it together, okay? Now, go to the next space and we're just gonna continue with our granny stitches. So three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, okay? 
So continue doing that around, and when we get to the back, the V on the back of our poncho, um, we'll do the same thing again, okay? So when we get almost to that V, we'll rejoin and I'll show you that again. Okay, and once again, when you get to the back of the poncho at the V, you're just going to do the same thing. So when you get to that space right before that V comes together, just work a slip stitch in that space, hop over the V, work a slip stitch in the next space. And that's it, that'll kind of bring it together. And then you can just finish up the round uh, like you've been doing. And then that will be all you really need to do to kind of give the neck a, a more finished look, okay? Okay, just coming up to the end of the round for our neck opening, and we're just gonna once again join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so that part is done. We're gonna cut the yarn, and then we can just fasten right off. And let's take a look at what we have here. We're gonna flip this over. We have lots of ends to weave in. We'll do that in just a moment. But we gave just a little bit more of an edge to our poncho. Let me slide it down so you can see it. And uh, we have ends to take care of, but we'll take care of those. But we gave just a little bit more of an edge to our poncho and it'll kind of sit up on the shoulders a little bit higher too, instead of kind of draping off, okay? So the very last thing we need to do is just weave in some ends. Now I'm gonna show you two types of ends that you'll encounter. So let's flip this up so we can see the inside. You can see there's lots of ends. Anytime you have lots of colors and motifs and joins, you're gonna have ends to deal with, of course. So grab your tapestry needle and your scissors, and you're gonna have some ends that, remember we wove them in as we went along. Those ends are pretty easy because we can, um, just snip them. So here's one here, you can see it's tucked in. I'm just gonna give it a little tug and snip it. That little tug will help it like kind of pop back in there and disappear. So you'll have several of these throughout your piece. You can just kind of go around and snip them. And then you'll also have some, like this one here where we joined a new ball of yarn it looks like, where you'll want to weave them in with a needle. So thread your tapestry needle And then you're going to just go in one direction with your needle. And we're gonna try and stay in those back loops because remember, this is the inside of our piece. We don't wanna go in the front. Now it's the same color yarn, so it probably wouldn't really show, but we just wanna be nice and neat with our finish work. Okay, so go in one direction with your tail and then you can kinda of like flip it around and come back in the other direction with that tail and pull that through and then just give it a little snip. And then what you wanna do is just go through, you can turn this inside out, and take care of all the ends that you find. Okay, so I've gone all around, we've woven and snipped all of our ends, and now let's have kind of the big reveal and turn our poncho, it's still inside out. Let's turn it right side out. We can look at everything. And this was such a fun project. I had so much fun playing around with the colors and all these pretty granny squares. Granny squares are just one of my most favorite things ever to make. So let me just, just lining this all up nice and neat for you to see. So this is our completed poncho and it looks beautiful. And I love the fresh springy colors and uh, I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. So that is how you crochet the Wildflower Fields Poncho. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.